Yeah, I gotta keep things real, you guys. The uh that last minute equalizer we conceded, it hurt. Um it hurt, man. I saw Tuchel making the right changes in the second half. I saw Kante coming on, helping us play in a 3-5-2 because we desperately needed some more reinforcement in the field because the reality is you've got Kovacic and Jorginho. Clearly, that's not fully fit. You know, Jorginho has been battling this entire December period. I mean, he's forced to play because we have no options there. Kovacic as well too has come back very soon, very early. In ideal circumstances, he's eased back into the team. However, the team's... It's light, it's light work right now. It's, it's, it's thin. There's not many options available in the team right now. So players have to push on, fight through the pain barrier a bit. And I really felt like in the end, we just did enough to secure that three points, man. I was seeing some intensity. I was seeing warrior spirit from your Mason Mounts and your Aspilicuetas. I saw Pulisic playing box to box. Yeah, a few times it was getting done. But guy's not a defender. The effort and application he put in, I was seeing Lukaku jacking back in our own half. We was like Didier Drogba clearing balls from the near post as well from set pieces. I feel like we had done enough until, I, and, I, and I still don't know how we conceded that because of course I'm watching it on Amazon. It literally cuts uh, some random passage of play for Brighton. And then all I see is Welbeck with some uh, time shooting flipping header in between Rudiger and, and Jalaba doing things I ain't seen before from anyone in the league scoring headers against our defence I've just not seen it and yeah that's it I think it's abundantly clear that there's no title coming this season I think we already knew that same time I'm not going to be out here disrespecting the players today definitely not I definitely saw a team that's fighting through fitness that still gave it the all in the ends and unfortunately today it just wasn't enough now there could be different discussions around this for me you look at the summer window did we do enough? Did we do enough to be able to prevent some of the issues we're having this season? Absolutely not. Because when you're signing guys like Saul, he's not even playing. Like, what is that telling you, bruv? What is that telling you? That Saul has had no injury issues. He hasn't got no COVID. Has had nothing wrong with him. Yet, he doesn't play any games. And instead, we have to rely upon half fit Kovacic and half fit Jorginho. What does that tell you? And I remember dickheads telling me to as well when I was totally against this move. Oh, it's only a long move. It's not like we're keeping him on a permanent. Are you forgetting that we need to rely upon every single player if you want any hopes to win the league? Like, what? these are just common sense things to me. And of course, poor transfer business ends up doing us in the end. This game, I felt, got even harder when we picked up two injuries. Christensen... And Reese James. I don't know what's up with Reese James. I'm hearing it's a hamstring. I'm praying it's not too severe. But that's our two best wing back threats out. You know, this wing, this wing back system, this theater back system also relies on the quality from the wing back system. We don't have that no more now. We have to go in the market and spend big. We have to go in the market. I'm praying we say fuck it. 50 mil, Theo Hernandez, AC Milan. Listen, we'll even throw in Hakim Zia Conlon if we have to, because these are the moves you have to make if you have any hopes of still trying to mount a title bid, yeah? But right now, you guys, you know, I can't be sitting here after I saw the players really putting in a shift and grinding hard near the ends. The quality caught us out, you know? Uncharacteristic things from a lot of players. Come on, they're not fully fit. And let's be serious as well, too. There were some poor performances. I'm looking at Hudson Adore today. I thought he was atrocious. I thought he was pretty awful. Normally when Callum plays dead, Tuchel does not have no sympathy. Tuchel takes him out the team straight away. We've seen him come on as a sub and seen him get, seen him get subbed off in the same game. We've seen him come off at half time as well too. What is that telling you about the fitness stamina levels of the entire squad and team? That of course, for tactical reasons, Hudson had to play to the 66th minute before Kante could come on because Kante can't be playing 60 minutes right now. It's mad. And for me, it comes down to prevention. I'm about my foresight, yeah? And I'm about finding the most intelligent measures in advance to circumvent any possible future issues or scenarios, you guys. And this is what I mean. We only sign one player this window, keeping the same whole squad as if that was going to be enough for us to mount a proper, proper title challenge. Because if you can't get through December, the most crucial crunch period for any title winner 
every single season, then you, you have no right winning the league. And no matter how much intensity you put in, the warrior spirit you put in as well too, ultimately, it's also that quality in the end that does shine through. And in this game today, even though I'm saying all this stuff, it's still a game of football. And there were still moments where we were capitalizing on Brighton's mistakes in their own half, yet the end product failed time and time again. From the second minute in the game, even though I respect Mount for what he did in this game today, the assist that he put in for Lukaku as well too. I've been saying for a while, why is our best set piece taking not taking set pieces? Little details like that too cool has to work on an improve upon, I'm sorry. But from the second minute of the game, he had a time to put in a very, uh, you, you think, an easy pass to Hudson Odoi with good weight, which got blocked out because it was a poor ball. And that's kind of typified our game, hasn't like have we ever really excelled in these like one v one attacking moments time and time again? Absolutely not. And it's like if it wasn't for our brilliance from set pieces, how many goals would we actually have from open play like that? Like real, like real talk. Come on, with all the penalties we win, the corners as well too, and, op and open play set pieces. How many of these are coming from open play like that? Which tells you a lot of things here. And a part of me is always going to say, listen, if you want to really mount a title challenge, you need to have. Attacking players that are firing and scoring, yeah? Needs to be getting goals. For us, back in the day, goals have come from many different positions. It was coming from the field a lot and from the strikers and wingers. They weren't getting five goals a season. Even when you serve and people used to hate your Pedro's and Williams, these guys were still putting in numbers, getting double digits for goals and assists. That, <laughs> that's the reality of the situation. Right now, we're not really able to do that. I mean, I'm always going to think that, okay, you know, I don't think we, the system does enough to really get the best out of attacking players of that. And I'm just going to keep saying that, to be fair. But yeah, you know, I need to get back to Hudson Odoi. As I was saying, other games too could take some off straight away. Could it in this game? And for me, it definitely was the worst ever performance I've seen from Hudson Odoi. At the same time, I sympathise because I understand the situation the squad's going through. We can't be listening to post-match interviews from Tuchel. We can't be reading, because listen, everyone who's watching me, you're probably on Twitter 24-7, you're consuming Chelsea Football Club 24-7. We know the status around the squad right now. You're having two injuries in the game too, but you can't even make the subs later on to help you seal out these wins like that. You know what I mean? Chris and Reese James, this is a difficult, hard game. And for me, I guess it will always come down to the fact that the sub of business just wasn't patterned, just wasn't good enough, you know? We didn't circumvent no future dangers at all. And now we're getting found out for it. I just think it really is that simple, to be honest. Um, going to be difficult now. Um, wow, Breeze James being out with Ben Jewell as well too. I'm seeing a Marcus Alonso where we know his limitations, yeah? He's not a guy that can play consecutive games because his form gets worse and worse after each game. Wow, what's going to happen there? The midfield is scaring me now, you know? That protection normally that you just rely upon the midfield to be in those right positions to close, and close down and snuff up the danger. It wasn't there at times because they're not fully fit, you know? I'm seeing a cover that's a lot better. I mean, you know cover's a lot better than today. Jorginho, especially as that game, the final 30 minutes, I was like, thank God Kante's on. Because wow, some of the balls he was giving away, the lack of power. All his power evaporated. He had nothing left. Tank was empty. Came into when it came to playing those balls in behinds, balls off the ground, he can't do that. That's his limitations as well, too. And as a start, these limitations become more abundant and more abundant and more abundant. It's annoying. It's annoying. After all of this though, just due to I guess I don't know, the system or the quality of the players. We still create these opportunities where you're expecting for better things to come in the final third. And I was seeing Hudson Odoi mess up some incredible opportunities, especially near the end too. I know he just had COVID recently, and this is what I've been trying to say too. COVID respiratory disease is going to affect players' lungs and stamina levels. Kai Havertz, it took him two months to get back last season, yeah. That's how long it normally takes, so it's, it's, it's a mad situation. There's so many things you can talk about. You can talk about the fact that isn't it stupid that even during COVID years, lots of Prem loser teams decided that having five subs wasn't going to benefit everyone because they were too worried about the top four teams that they can't even compete on the same level with. I mean, that's Prem logic, uh, to be honest. But I mean, you know, what can you, you can't use that as an excuse. You can't really use that for anything, really. You know, uh, Brighton, good team great performance. I give him a lot of credit for how they played today. Throughout the back, 
looking to play football as well too. Not just sitting there soaking up pressure, soaking up danger. Looking to play football, do you know what they can do? And they put us under some real pressure sometimes. Some unbelievable pressure. Mendy had to be on point quite a lot in this game. Set pieces, he was busy. I'm not really seeing Mendy that busy. He kind of tells everything he needs to know, to be honest. But still, you know, I just thought we just had enough in that tank right near the end to just seal things through. And the fact that we couldn't, for me, is just the biggest indicator that title orders for this season aren't coming. We'll get top four, we'll get Champions League spots. I think our success this season will come from uh, cup competitions. You know, getting that Carabao Cup, Club World Cup, and hopefully the Champions League again, an FA Cup or something. Because I think this team and knockout round football is absolutely elite. And I think we can take on any team in the world when it comes to knockout games. But over the course of a season, you need to rely upon your squad. You need to have that quality consistently from everywhere. And I just don't think those details in the summer were secured upon properly when man like fucking Saul was signed an absolute waste of money. One of the worst players I've seen at this club too in a long time. And the fact that you can't even rely upon him during difficult times like this sums up just how poor that business was so you guys i'm gonna just stop rambling on now it hurts how we conceded and i don't know what happens from here now but all we can just pray is that no more injuries and players find their fitness soon i'll see you guys later with some more videos cool